Um, in your first book, Owen has a very full life before he marries Catherine. Can you tell me what we know of his life before? And like in your books, we see it, or in the book, we see him getting into these kerfuffle scuffles with crooked cooks who are poaching food and um, kitchen fairs. He's having these other love affairs and all this kind of thing. How did you construct all those different characters and, and what do we know of him from that? Well, I'll stick to the, the facts and then I'll explain how I link them together. Because the facts are that the Tudors came originally from the island of Anglesey, which I mentioned earlier. And it's quite a remote part of the country, really. It's separated from the mainland by the very fast flowing and dangerous Menai Strait. Mm. And then even once you get across that, uh, North Wales in Tudor times was quite a wilderness. And there was a lot of fighting, civil wars going on. And unfortunately for Owen, uh, his father fled to London, taking his son with him. So Owen, whether he wanted to or not, found himself as a child in London with a sort of itinerant Welsh father. And um, it must have been quite a struggle, but he would have grown up on the streets. So I wanted to show that he had quite a sort of streetwise approach to himself. He wasn't um, particularly well educated, but he could read and write. Mm -hmm. And that's quite unusual, really, for somebody like him. And he somehow managed to find himself as a, as a boy in France with Henry V. And so there's um, debate about the extent to which he was involved. But uh, he is actually a squire to the chap who was the constable of Windsor Castle. And so it's fairly easy to see how. Uh, he managed to get a job, a cushy number probably, in Windsor Castle. And uh, my wife and I visited Windsor Castle, so we've got first-hand knowledge of exactly what the layout is like. And it's just amazing that if Owen was there today, he would recognise most of it, even after the big fire that was there. But how he got from being... Uh, a servant to being the husband of the, the dowager queen of England. Um, everybody's got a view on that. Mm -hmm. And do you know what I think the answer is? It's quite a simple thing. He was the keeper of the wardrobe, which is a strange term. It actually means looking after all of her possessions, her dresses, but also her jewellery. And he'd been picked because he was quite able to look after himself. And I think he was quite good with people. Okay. So I tried to reflect all of those bits of known fact. Mm -hmm. um, exactly how he ended up marrying her is, is open to debate, but he did. Mm -hmm. And um, so I had to get from being her servant to being her husband, which was a, a great challenge for a historical fiction author. And if I was writing it as a non-fiction book, I'd have to end the chapter, turn the page, and then they're married, yeah. which wouldn't be quite so much fun, I don't think. Sure, so you worked in these, this, he had a really long-term affair, really, that lasted for years in your book. Um, is there any evidence of that woman? Absolutely, he wasn't a monk. Right. And so he wouldn't have gone um, just uh, living like a monk just because he was the queen's servant. He would have been quite a catch for any of the other female servants that were there. And um, they would have seen an opportunity if they wanted to, to raise their status and to have a bit more security. But I, I like to put it that it was a bit of an on-off relationship because actually all the time he had a bit of a thing for the queen. However implausible that might seem. That's the truth. Mm, interesting. Um, there, you portray Henry VI in the books as a young boy in the first book with Owen. And I remember there was this scene that, where he was first- Henry VII. Er, sorry. Well, Henry VI, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, as a boy, there was the jousting scene where he was, um, 
he was going to be uh, have his new tutor come his the who was going to be showing him how to do the how to start jousting and there was this belief at first everybody was really nervous about it that that he was going to fall and hurt himself and it wasn't you know going to be it was going to be a disaster but he actually did pretty well in in the end and it was just an interesting kind of there's so many stereotypes of him older and yet you portray i guess i'm just curious about like how did you put that part of his character together as a younger boy it was really fascinating because i had to put myself in his shoes and first of all he was a very skilled horseman as they all were from a very young age so the bit about riding a horse was really quite like we would consider driving a car a, a basic life skill riding a horse with a lance in your hand is quite a different thing and so once again it was expected of nobles to be really at least competent um, to fight on horseback and the way that they practiced that was um, charging at each other with lances and various other weapons and Henry would have been no exception. He would have been forced, whether he wanted to or not, to um, at least tilt at the ring, which is, a, it sounds quite painless that, doesn't it? But I don't know if you've seen a, a quintain, there's a heavy weight on the other side. Yeah. And if you actually strike a shield, it swings around violently and hits you on the back of the head. And uh, they still do that to this day. At jousting tournaments and it's it's quite fun but also quite dangerous if you fall off mm. and um, I, I didn't see the need for him to have been a, a scholar or just reading books all day um, although I did feel that Prince Arthur was a bit more like that um, Henry VII's eldest son who sadly died at the age of 16 um, there's good evidence that he really didn't enjoy uh, fighting on horseback or anything like that, I much preferred his books. Yeah. Whereas, of course, Henry VIII, they couldn't stop him. They had to ban him, in fact, from doing it because he was taking too much fun out of it. <laughs> That's funny. And then you show Catherine of Valois. I thought it was really interesting. You, you create her character having kind of the same mental health issues that her father had and later then that her son would have. And I just wonder if there was any evidence for that and kind of how you put that in there? This, this is a really interesting question because um, as you probably know, um, Catherine's father, King Charles of France, um, was also called the Mad King because he killed several of his servants not recognizing them. He thought he was made of glass and um, he was he would be diagnosed in various ways, ranging from psychotic to psychopathic. He was really a um, very troubled person. And then, of course, Henry VI, uh, it's extremely well documented uh, that he would occasionally forget who he was or where he was and fell into what we now would call a catatonic trance, which none of the efforts of any of his doctors could rouse him from, including putting hot coals to the soles of his feet. Mm. So there's no question that he was faking it. Right. And in the middle, the only person that connects those two is Catherine of Valois. Mm. So I didn't want to overdo it, but I felt that under extreme stress, such as when she'd um, either almost died losing a child or thought she'd lost her child or anything like that. Um, these problems could be there beneath the surface and begin to manifest themselves in various ways. And um, it was really interesting as, as a novelist to gently explore uh, the suspicions of those around her that she might be showing those symptoms. And uh, can you imagine yourself if, if um, you know, you had relatives uh, who had severe mental health problems and then people are looking at you with a raised eyebrow whenever you um, behave in any way which is unexpected to them. Yeah. So I thought that was quite interesting and I did actually leave it as an open question for the reader to make their own mind up. And if they do go back to the 
the evidence that I've found, it is very thin, but uh, it's well framed by the experiences of her relatives. 